zero, a number and a concept. The idea of nothingness, an infinite emptiness, as a circle which never ends, with a gaping hole representing its lack of value. The symbol and the number have always represented emptiness, a lack, a vacancy, a void. While the number for Henry's apartment in Silent Hill 4 is likely a random one, the choice of zero for the center feels far more pointed. A hint that at the heart of this room is a gaping, empty hole, an encroaching darkness, which will swallow up everything it touches. Room 302 is the pivotal location of Silent Hill 4, and can even be seen as a kind of character in the game, a haven from danger and a dangerous threat, a place of safety and a prison. The apartment is central to the core themes of the game. Themes of isolation, voyeurism, imprisonment, and powerlessness. Situated on the third floor of the Ashfield Apartments, Room 302 has been the home of at least two deaths, Walter's suicide and his murder of the previous tenant, but it's possible the place was tainted long before then. The complex was built 40 years before the game's events, and Walter was born there six years later. He begins to kill while living in the area, perhaps in the apartment itself. Game lore states that the room was empty at the time, and yet someone was seen inside, around the time Walter ended the Ten Heart murders. His body, trapped behind a secret wall, confirms that he was present here at least once, but perhaps far more often while he was killing his first ten victims. All his kills are memorialized on the wall of the apartment building, perhaps implying that the darker side of the building has been increasing ever since Walter's first kill. The apartment is one of the few locations in Silent Hill 4 that involves a first-person camera. The player sees from Henry's point of view, seeing the apartment as if it was their own, and seeing for themselves the corruption as the hauntings begin overtaking it. The immediacy is part of the horror as is the feeling of seeing and being seen, unable to do more than peek out the peephole and stare through holes, unable to reach out for help. But there are some things the player can do in the room, namely examine things. In doing so, Henry will make comments which not only reveal a great deal about his situation, but they also change as the story continues revealing how his mind changes over time. There are 18 items and locations in Room 302 which can be examined, and which involve changing reactions. The major change points involve the deaths of characters and the end of chapters, though there are fewer changes between Jasper and Andrew than there are between the rest of the chapters. They involve three major types of changes, those that are references to the series, those that depict how the other world influences the apartment, and those that show Henry is slowly losing his mind. The smallest section of changes involve references, in-jokes for fans of the series most often. Constant examination of the lighthouse image in Henry's room will lead to comments on the appearance of UFOs in the town of Silent Hill referencing the UFO endings of previous games, which Team Silent had hoped to include in 4, but had to cut for time. The toilet will eventually lead to a prompt in which Henry can attempt to stick his hand in, only to chicken out at the last moment. The last reference is to a film rather than the series, Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window. The image of the apartment complex leads to a series of comments about how the shape of the building lets one see into other people's apartments, which Henry remembers as having been part of the plot of a major film. 
Rear Window is a film based on a short story, in which an injured photographer, trapped in his apartment while he recovers, spends his time spying on his neighbors, and inadvertently views a murder, and sets about trying to catch the murderer. The similarity to Henry's situation leads one to wonder if his connection to photography might not have been a rear window reference as well. The second category of observations involve revelations about how the other world affects the apartment, comments on how certain objects do or don't work, how the atmosphere feels oppressive or the item feels strange. They may start out innocently enough. Henry mentions having positive feelings about certain photos and the places in them, but by the end of the game, those feelings have turned to trepidation and fear. The clock on the wall of the living room leads Henry to comment about when the time stopped. 10.06, presumably a week before the game's opening cutscene, later commenting how the loss of the clock led him to losing all sense of time, and later still to wonder how much time had really passed since the room started going crazy. The TV has similar comments, how it won't turn on, and then later how it did turn on when Henry hadn't done anything to it. But the most interesting comments, and the most common, are those that involve Henry and his decomposing sense of self. In the first chapter of the game, just after the introduction and before going to the subway, Henry is his most normal. Exploring and examining items in the apartment leads to him explaining what they are and how he obtained them. The books on the bookshelf are his, and he moved in with them. The various photos around the apartment were taken by him, nearly all of them in Silent Hill. The picture over the couch was a gift from Frank, the superintendent, and so on. Items like the stove and toilet lead him to comment on how he doesn't have time or isn't interested in the item currently. But as he begins to enter the dreams, these comments slowly change. In some places, he elaborates more on what he says. Examining the desk the first two times leads Henry to explain his scrapbooking, though he says it's not useful given the current circumstances. But by the third comment, he says he can't remember why he cut any of these images out. Then he forgets what magazine they came from. The next comment becomes, it's my scrapbook. Everything in here is also in another copy I carry all the time, so I don't have to worry. Then the last comment, simply, it's my scrapbook. His comments become simpler, even repetitive. Examining the bookshelf reveals that the books are his, and he hasn't touched them since he moved in. Then, he says he doesn't read them anyway, perhaps forgetting he did used to read them before moving into 302. Then he says it's just a bunch of cheap novels in the last comment, a line which completely foregoes any sense of ownership. The weirdest example is the pair of shoes near the front door. The first comment reveals these are Henry's shoes. The second makes him wonder when and where did he buy them. Then he remembers he bought them in Silent Hill, and yet in the last comment, he questions if the shoes are really his. With each dive into the dream worlds of Walter's nightmares come to life, Henry leaves a little bit of himself behind. He seems to lose interest in anything, commenting less and less as he goes. By the time the hauntings start, his private conversations end. But before that, he's clearly starting to lose control of his mind and his memories. He says things that are contradictory, forgets and repeats things, his speech becoming confused and even simple-minded compared to how he used to speak. He also becomes incredibly paranoid. Early comments about his photography are joyful. He discusses how he was attracted by the view of the apartments when he took the picture. Looking at the lighthouse, he comments how Silent Hill is a nice place to relax. The church leads to a comment on how he was attracted to the Balkan church's facade, and so on. Each comment is relatively normal, explaining what he took a picture of and why. But by the end of the comments, he's far more perturbed by the images than he is comforted. 
And it's more than simply having different connotations for those images now that he's seen a glimpse of Silent Hill. The images themselves, not the places they depict, seem to disturb him. The church photo gives him a seriously creepy feeling, and he feels like he's being sucked in as he stares at it. The photo of the bike makes him comment how he feels weird looking at it. The only photo that doesn't eventually disturb him is the one the superintendent gave him. Every photo he took becomes something twisted that gives him a bad or weird feeling. The comment that he feels sucked into the image is telling. These were photos he took while standing in Silent Hill itself, and that may have created a powerful link between him, the images, and the town. An interesting fact about the picture of Silent Hill over the couch. It is actually a picture of San Giorgio Maggiore, a 16th century Benedictine church in Venice, Italy. It's a central landmark in the waterfront marketplace area, likely chosen to represent the waterfront of the fictional tourist town. There's only one location that can be commented on that doesn't fit the above pattern, the shower. The comment in early portions of the game is the same, first that it's a normal bathtub, then for a while, he comments about how no one is in there, another horror movie reference, and that comment doesn't change until after Andrew dies. Then Henry returns to find the bathtub bathed in blood, and it will be for the rest of the game. Examining the shower head leads him to wonder if the blood was coming out of it. The first time he examines it after Andrew's death, he'll mention how it smells just like that water-filled room under the prison. His only comment after this will be, blood. It's stained with blood. After Walter kills Andrew in the water prison, the bathtub changes to reflect his bloody end. Blood traveling through water pipes, much as they must have in the prison in the past. Examining the room reveals that Henry has many connections to the town of Silent Hill. Besides his many photos he took during a trip to the town, he also comments that he used to visit Silent Hill a lot at that age when examining his childhood photos. His shoes, he says, he bought in Silent Hill. He's at least been to the town a handful of times, and once as an adult. Most of the furniture in the apartment was already there when he moved in, given comments made by Henry. Being a one-bedroom apartment in part of what appears to be downtown Ashfield, in a building that is poorly renovated and central to multiple murder areas, all points to the room being a very cheap apartment and Henry a very poor person. He has a high school degree, but probably not a college degree, or else that photo would be next to the others on the table. He's a photographer, he's been to Silent Hill a great deal, and his only major possessions are his photos, his books, and his scrapbooks. The room will shift from a place of safety to one of danger, at which point Henry stops commenting on the apartment, no longer seeing it as home. Hauntings will begin to appear. Thirteen possible supernatural events which can cause Henry physical harm and will lead to the worst endings of the game if left untreated. Rattling windows, blood pouring out of faucets, ghosts coming through the walls, all rather typical horror story staples. The image of the Balkan church in Henry's room can transform into a picture of Walter's corpse. The picture is on the wall adjacent to the secret room, just in front of where his corpse would be. Instead of changing the image, it almost became a window to the truth of Walter's location. That Walter has been here the whole time is the major twist of the game. The keys to the chains on the door are in his pocket. Henry's escape was so close by the whole time. So was the man who imprisoned him, his body at least, a constant companion, sleeping the eternal sleep just behind the wall of Henry's bedroom. The darkness at the heart of room 302 seems to be a living, creeping thing, which sucks the life from the room's inhabitants, possibly those living in the whole apartment complex. Frank Sunderland, having lived there for 40 years, 
may be as addle-minded and distracted as he is because of the long and constant drain on his soul. It's likely also why many people in the building die should Henry Townshend fail to stop Walter Sullivan. Thank you for listening to this week's Silent Hill Symbolism. From now on, the series will be taking a somewhat different turn. Increased harassment on my channel has led me to put many videos behind a paywall. If you'd like access to them, you can either join my Discord or become a member through Patreon or YouTube. The podcast will continue as normal, and I'll be adding some of the older topics from previous YouTube videos to the podcast as time goes on, starting around episode 10. Thanks again for listening. I'll see you all next time in that foggy town of Silent Hill.